Welcome, everybody. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. And we are Po on the Call here with episode 16. And we are going into injury prevention and dealing with an injury during your Po journey. <laughs> yes, which is something that sucks, and, and it, but it happens and it's real. And, um, yeah. you know, maybe you've never had an injury before because pole is your first sport. So um, we're not doctors. <laughs> we're just polers and and we are prone to injuries so um we're just going to talk a little bit about how we um prevent injuries and how we deal with them when, when they happen yeah awesome so do you want to start this off or i can start it off with the injury prevention um yeah yeah let's let's talk about injury pre- prevention first what are some things that you do to prevent awesome so I know one thing that we're taught when we go to training is always do your warm up before any um, exercise conditioning, whether it's pole or off the pole. Um, the warm up is used to warm up your body, of course, and raise your heart rate and pretty much get your body ready to um, do the exercise at hand. When you're doing a pole warm up, you kind of want to add exercises that will help you warm up and condition the body parts that you'll be using so like if you're doing fan kicks maybe some ground fan kicks things like that um just really getting those muscles prepared and having a well thought out training program i guess to to help prevent injury yes yeah for sure the warm-up is so important and it you know um it, it should include like mobility exercises just to like wake up your joints Um, like all of your joints, head, neck, shoulders, chest, hips, legs, (laughs) knees, feet, um, especially feet, because you'll get a foot cramp if you don't, Um, like, yeah, all of those things, and as you get older, you'll probably have to do even more intense warm-ups, you know, just to um, get particular body parts working again, and then um, also like um, work warming up your abs too. That's not a joint, but you should definitely warm up your abs um, and your back. Um, so yeah, definitely warming up before you do your thing. And then um, also like, I guess, making sure you don't eat like right before you pull. Um, it's not really an injury, but I've seen a few students who maybe have eaten a big meal like before, right before class and they didn't have a good time during class um, or, and then after class as well. So um, that would be something to think about. Um, but then I guess beyond that is like making sure that your, your body is, is ready to, to do your thing beyond the warm up, like uh, maybe going to the gym and making sure that your, your muscles are balanced on either side and um, you know, making sure that you're paying attention to things that are going on with your body so that you don't tweak something. Like let's say you woke up in the morning and you were like, ah, I must have flipped wrong on my neck. Now I feel terrible. Um, maybe you don't want to do like some some like sexy class that'll have your head tossed around that day. Um, just things like that um, to prevent injury that you can um, be prepared for. Because um, as we know, most of the injuries that we get our injuries that we're not prepared for. <laughs> yeah. So very true. Um, I love that you add the food part because um, that's with really any workout. Like you should not eat like two, three hours beforehand. I mean, fruit and like a little salad is okay, but definitely not like high carbs and protein. <laughs> Save that for after the workout. Um, another good way to prevent injury is always the cool down. Um, we underestimate the cool down, but the cool down is used to stretch our bodies after using those muscles in a way that we normally don't use them and kind of just bring our heart rate down, cool us down. Um, we can stretch our joints, our muscles, and everything that we worked hard, especially in pole. Um, and definitely some stretching outside. I highly recommend stretching outside. Um, those little two minute bouts on your own throughout the day, like really do wonders for your body rather than just not doing any stretching at all. I always tell people if you can't do like a full 15 minute session, that's okay. Do like two minutes, like five times a day and it'll get there. Stretching is stretching. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like it should be like, um, 
cl- class or, or your practice should be like kind of like a ritual. It should be like the warm up, you know, class content, your conditioning, and then your cool down. So it's like, oh, your body knows it's like this wave of thing. <laughs> and, and you'll be prepared for all of the things that happen um, in your practice. Um, and then another thing for injury prevention. Um, shoot, I just had it. <laughs> this always happens to me. Um, well, maybe it'll come back to me. If Chris, do you have another uh, one? I do. Um... Um, to definitely avoid injuries is not to move too fast or start doing or go beyond your scope. Like you should not be doing like handsprings if you can't even get into a butterfly. (laughs) Um, Like a lot of those advanced moves, we try to get into them and we think our body can do them, but we don't realize that certain muscles are compensating. You probably don't have that proper shoulder engagement that you should. Um, really really kind of take your time master the basics and work your way up i totally understand wanting to get into those beautiful moves but if your body is not ready to get into a jade you should not be (laughs) doing it you should be working on your flexibility um if your shoulder strength should not be doing hand springs you should be conditioning shoulders and things like that um a lot of the times we tend to rush 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 and cause a lot of injuries I'm my, I myself included, when I started off, I didn't go to a studio. I learned through YouTube and I didn't learn to engage certain body parts the proper way. And now my shoulder falls out of socket in certain like spins or hangs um, and things like that. So yeah, <laughs> take your time, do not rush. <laughs> Um, I hope that, I don't know if you thought of what you lost earlier. <laughs> yeah, you know, Chris, when you were saying that whole segment about, about shoulders and like handsprings and not being ready, like, were you talking to me? <laughs> no, not at I'm all. I'm just kidding. Definitely, um, definitely personal experience too, because <laughs> I have been feeling it lately. <laughs> well, for real though, like I, that's what I'm currently experiencing. The the fact that my body wasn't physically ready to to try um, harder tricks and I was trying them and then, um, I wasn't getting them. So I did go to a doctor and found out that my, you know, my shoulders are not in line. Um, and I've got some, some twisting going on. So I've got to get that fixed before I can try these, um, other tricks. So this is something that is, you know, rare, but it, um, you know, things to think about your body just for injury prevention. Cause like, you know, if you're like, not in your perfect alignment or you don't have enough stability in your back muscles, which is what I have. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be able to hold myself up um, in those moves. But yeah, the, the thing that I forgot about was, um, that I remembered was don't um, overtrain. So have a training schedule and like, we all love pole, but like, don't overdo it. Uh, especially if you're, you just started and you like, you're like, yeah, I really wanna get into it. Um, a lot of times like we'll, we'll overtrain and like our abs won't be ready and then um you know you'll have to sit out for a while um so yeah make sure that you give yourself some rest <laughs> remember rest is practice especially for us polars we have a hard time resting so you have to like constantly keep telling yourself like today i will do nothing <laughs> yeah it is so true. It is very hard, especially when you have a home pole. Um, sometimes I'm just like, ah, oh, one spin won't hurt. Um, and sometimes I do do it, but there are those days where I'm just like, no, Chris, like not a damn thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't even lift your arms. Like, just enjoy. <laughs> um, so is there anything else for injury prevention? We talked about overtraining staying within your range and conditioning for those harder tricks rather than rushing into them, warming up and cooling down. Yeah. And I guess um, a little bit of knowledge about, you know, anatomy wouldn't hurt. Um, If you just like grab a little book, we have a little book at the studio. It's just like, if you wanted to look (laughs) what it looks like inside of your body, you can just flip to page 24 and you'll see like the insides of your chest muscles and all of that. So it's kind of just good to like um, see what's going on inside of your body. Um, if you are a visual learner, like like I am, 
really like to see what's going on or else it doesn't make sense um, to, to me. And then I can protect my body a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for injury prevention. But then we get to what happens when you are injured <laughs> and you have to take time yeah. off from pole and it really feels like the end of the world because yeah. it, it is. And it happens like, to us all, all of yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, but um, remember that pole is a journey. It's it's not a destination. Like you, you're never gonna get there. <laughs> like it'll always be there for you. And you know your training goes up and down. And and you know when you are injured, you'll be obviously down, but you'll always be able to get back up again. Um, you might have like a new body part to deal with or something like that. Like when I tore my ACL and they took a piece of my hamstring tendon to make my new ACL and I called it my ham knee and me and my ham knee went back to the pole <laughs> and we got reacquainted with, um, you know, knee hooks and all that stuff. So it was like, you know, my new, my new knee and me and my new knee worked just fine. And now we're awesome again. And it just takes, you know, a lot of, of patience which is the hardest thing um, to get through but you definitely like if you're injured like big time like for your ACL um, you definitely don't want to be like playing around in the pole you know because after you have surgery and stuff like that all your insides are still fixing each other even though you might feel good you don't want to mess things up inside so always listen to your doctor um, you know so always you know go to the doctor if you are feeling terrible or something has happened to you, whether in the pole class or outside, before you go into class with that injury. Yeah. Chris, what about you? Yes, I love that you um, mentioned um, trying not to like do anything so you don't injure that injury, re-injure that injury, even though you might feel good, you're really not good. On the con, um, I would add to, to I guess not contrast it, but to go with that, I guess is a better way to say. Also, don't baby it. <laughs> um, a lot of times it's hard to find the balance between not doing anything at all so you don't re injure it and then um, doing too much. And it's hard to find the middle. You should be in the middle. So you should find out what stretches or what things you can be doing. Um, with that injured body part to help make it better how many times a day rather than just keeping it mobile because there's so much truth to the saying of um, you don't use it you lose it I believe it I believe that's it so definitely list, um, like Mandy said don't do things you shouldn't be doing while you're healing even if you feel good but also don't baby it find out what stretches you can be doing in or what conditioning exercises you can be doing to help make it stronger, maybe help improve it. Because even though you're not pulling, you're still doing those stretches and those conditioning exercises to help make you a stronger and better polar when you return. Uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I had a tendency to baby, <laughs> baby myself. But I mean, you you should go back, you know, when you come back from your injury, you're not going to have full strength again. Um, so you should go back to level one. But yeah, um, the longer you stay in level one, <laughs> that's up to you. But, you know, you'll you'll be ready at a certain point to to move on up again. And like I said before, you'll have a different different feeling maybe in, in your body, but you'll still be there. But the patience of getting through it, like some of these injuries take a long, long time. For, of like mandatory healing <laughs> like I think the ACL was was like eight months um I was back to like teaching flex um after three months but like yeah pull it, it took quite a while for me to to get back there but I'm back like it's fine <laughs> uh, that sucks. so it's uh, definitely a fear and a dread because I used to get injured all the time and I wasn't even teaching. So I can't even imagine getting injured during teaching and not being able to be there as a student and stuff. It's just, oh, uh, I can't. Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, it definitely, definitely sucks. But the students understand and then they see you going through it and then, you know, um, you can help them if that ever happens to them. So, you know, just 
is a thing. <laughs> the circle of injuries. Um, yeah. But also, like, let's say these are injuries that are, like, um, big, giant injuries that maybe, like, put you full stop. Um, but let's talk about some injuries that are maybe, like, nagging and, like, get bigger over time. Um, and these are things that you should definitely notice in your body uh, and you should get them checked out because that's your body telling you that something's wrong. <laughs> and even though like, we're really good at, at masking it, um, you know, we, we're on the pole, we're like, look at me, even though like it hurts a lot. Um, so we're really good at hiding things. You don't want to hide your pain. Um, pain is not something that we should experience all the time. It's not good for our body. So yeah, talking to your doctor about what's going on so they can figure it out. Um, and it'll help your pole practice too. definitely will um goodness i just had a thought and it slipped out of my head why did it slip out of my head? oh yes you're talking about like specific injuries that you might have mm. um knees oh my goodness knees come back to haunt you for sure <laughs> i had i got a knee injury when i was 20 from basic training it was an obstacle course and i fell on one of the what the fuck was it? A log row and like smashed my left knee. And of course, I kept on like, you know, I'm young. I'm going to be okay. Now I can feel it. <laughs> um, it really makes like left-sided jazz man's outside leg hangs difficult. So it's made my left side interesting, but they definitely come back to haunt you. And uh, you probably know this for sure. I definitely have to start wearing more knee pads more. <laughs> right. I feel like there comes like a point, like there was definitely like a point in my life where it was like knee pads are necessary. Like they have to go on now. <laughs> like There's no like, oh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, no, my knees are, are just fucked. So they need some help. <laughs> are so true can't wait <laughs> yeah but luckily there's knee pads that have like the grip on the back so you can go from the floor to the pole seamlessly and you don't have to worry about smashing up your knees and stuff like that so so it's okay <laughs> <laughs> and like other things like inj um, injury prevention I guess we could go back to that I forgot about um like kinesiology tape so if you are having a sore um place so you can put that tape on somewhere um, and it kind of like just is that that stimulation to like remind your body that you're <laughs> you have a thing going on like a little twinge but yeah do those work because I always wanted to try because I've seen people wearing them and I'm like what's the fucking point I don't understand <laughs> do they yeah, work you know I I was skeptical about them too but then I started using them and they actually like relieve <laughs> relieve the pain the only thing that sucks is that, you know, um, like you try to keep them on for a long period of time, but they start to peel off and like, they're kind of painful when you peel them off and then they leave like, you know, well, at least on me, I guess everyone's skin is different, but they leave like adhesive. And, you know, if you keep repeating the adhesive over time, it was irritating to my skin. So, but yeah, I, I would recommend the, the kinesiology tape and there's lots of, um, videos on YouTube to help you um, put them on. And then speaking of YouTube, I wanted to talk about like, I was like, yeah, you should go see a doctor um, if you're hurting, but like um, not everyone is able to go see a doctor. And like, there are <laughs> physical therapists on YouTube that have very good information and they don't replace, um, you know, the benefits of going to see a doctor, but really if it's all you have, um, definitely go and, and look up some issues that you have and see if it fits and, you know, you can, you know, self-diagnose yourself and maybe you'll have a better idea of how to, if you do go see a doctor, which you should, um, get, get the help that you need. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's, that's how so I, true. that's so, how I do it. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard. You're right. Like it's not easy to go see a doctor for like an injury, like <laughs> workers comp and make it a little easier. But like just for polling, like, oh my God. Is there even insurance that covers <laughs> the dogs? <laughs> Is 
It's like every time we record, someone has to walk up and down the dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My cats were just meowing back there, and I was like, "Please stop!" They they seem to. I wish I could it. have cats. I'm I'm in love with cats. They're my favorite, but I'm severely allergic. Like they'll kill me. So I, uh, I wish. That sucks. <laughs> Uh, well, back to the um, injuries. <laughs> yeah. Different parts we can injure. Um, do you have oh, another yeah. one? I know I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, that the shoulders are probably the number number two after the knees. <laughs> yeah, um, shoulder. That's on me too. The shoulders and the knees are like terrible. Uh, actually, hips. Oh my gosh, every single quadrant uh, of my body. I was gonna say hips next. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? My neck, like, I, you know, it's attached to my shoulders. So, like, at literally everything. But also, like, um, I'm hypermobile. <laughs> so that's just something that's unique to my body. Um, I know, Chris, you have the hypermobility as well. So, and, and everyone who is hypermobile has a different sort of unique recipe of situations going on um, within them. But um, that's how we deal with with it, you just learn more about your body and ways you can have fun on the pole rather than injure yourself. <laughs> oh, like I guess um, a way that I know personally that I um, don't want to injure myself is the Marley. I don't do that move anymore because I know that, oh, as I fall off, <laughs> I know when I'm like holding my leg, I'm not using enough hamstring and calf muscle and like hip and everything to like squeeze my leg. I'm just using my strong ass arm. So I know like that move is not good for me um, until I strengthen <laughs> my muscles. That's so funny you said that. A student asked me for that. I was like, yeah, we could try it. It's been a while. Let me condition it. And I tried it. I was like, oh, fuck. It's going to be, it's going to take a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That used to be my jam, but it ended up like this was before I tore my ACL. Um, so yeah, now I know better, but you know, this is my body. This is not your body. This is, you know, everyone's got their own unique <laughs> situation. So I will teach you that Marley. If you're watching, I will teach you. Yeah. I come to class, but I will teach you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But um, there's not a, a lot of moves that I can do, but we could still teach them. Um, there are, some moves I know are not for me, um, but that's just. You me. have a wide variety of moves. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, there's plenty of there's plenty of moves. I'm not upset, um, but yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, I guess uh, dealing with the, the injuries, um, try try to get some support um, with your injury. Try to talk to somebody who's had this injury that you're experiencing because it can feel really lonely, um, the healing process. I even went through, I tell this to students all the time too, when they get injured, because it was so weird to me, but there was definitely like a grieving process that I went through, um, like grieving my, when I, my ACL injury, grieving my old ACL, like it was like, it did the best it could, but like, I had to like, let it go. Um, you know, it was there for me. It was trying its best but it was just the way it was. <laughs> there was nothing I could have done about it. And then, you know, getting through all of that. And, you know, like I said, getting reacquainted with my ham knee because it's now a hamstring ACL. <laughs> Which is so weird, like a science project or an arts and crafts inside my body. But here we are. So yeah, just getting through the, because there's a long time you're going to be sitting, just like thinking about yourself with your leg up, watching Jersey Shore. <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> Asking say, people to get that, things. But... <laughs> yeah, like you can't, you can't. The only time I got up was to like go to the bathroom and it was like, I got really good at pistol squats because you can only use one leg to go to the bathroom. Um, Thank goodness for urinals or bottles. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, I think that was the biggest thing because I'm not a patient person and I'm also a little control freak. So like the fact that I was not in control and I didn't have any patience was a lot for me. So um, having a support system um, of, of friends and you know family and people who could help you out, um, give you some guidance, let you know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel 
you'll be okay. <laughs> Another injury which is common and sucks is back injuries. Be careful. Um, and back injuries could happen for a lot of reasons. Um, it could be lack of core strength, or it could just be you're going through so much and your body is tense and not ready to pull. And of course, as pole dancers, we still do it because it's our stress relief and there's nothing wrong with that. But our body just reacts um, or also doing moves that you shouldn't be doing. Um, so definitely be careful because they, they take a while to heal um, and it is it really messes up like your daily your activity your daily living activities um so be careful beware strengthen those cores um be careful if you're going through a lot of stress or tension that your body doesn't compensate and don't do moves or twists or ballerinas that you should not be doing if you're not ready <laughs> <laughs> Yes, for sure. Like, it's fine to, you know, sometimes your friend will have to hand do your foot. <laughs> but yeah, if you're not ready to even be handed your foot, like you shouldn't, you know, try to force yourself into things because, yeah, your your spine is, you know, it's got where all the, the nerves are. So it could really like mess up some other things. Um, but yeah. Yeah, what else? I guess feet feet sometimes get smashed um and of course we all know we get covered in bruises <laughs> just regular bruises from the pole um you might get stabbed by a heel um that's happened to me several times <laughs> yeah i think that's all of my i mean the shoulder issue that i'm dealing with now is is um i guess i guess let me talk about this this is kind of like uh uh normal I mean, not normal, but um, popular amongst pole dancers just because of how we usually hold our arms. And it's the scapular winging, which is when um, the stability muscles are not holding on. So like your whole scapula comes out when you lift your arms. So um, this is a, a terrible thing. <laughs> so, and it happens, you know, fairly often, like I said, just because of what we're doing in pole. So just, monitoring your body and always feeling like your arms are coming from your back, which is my new motto. Um, this is a good, good thing to think about. Yeah. Mm. I like how you said that because I've been focusing on that a lot since for the last couple of months, especially on spins, because I normally stay away from them um, due to shoulders. But since we've been focusing on that more, I know at the studio and just in our everyday life, it has been nice to kind of retrain everything. And like you said, feel like the arm is a part of it rather than like hanging there. It's really a different feeling. Um, it truly is really weird. Um, definitely not where I hope to be or where I should be, especially as many years as I've been polling but it is nice to still be learning about my body and improving one day at a time. <laughs> right, like that's all we can do. Like we just keep learning and, and just try to keep being safe. Um, it's better it's totally to be safe than sorry. But it's so funny, like um, like you said, it's like feeling your arm anchored from your to your body rather than just putting it in space is such a weird feeling. And, and just like knowing that you have to keep like reminding your body to do that. Um, which is just a practice. It's a muscle memory thing, like anything we do in pole. But for some people, it's easier than, than other people, um, especially like people who are hypermobile. There's like a proprioception, proprioception thing going on, which I think was really my issue. I didn't understand really where <laughs> the side, my side body was. I thought it was here. So like, this is my side, but that's like front should be here. But anyway, I'm getting myself checked out. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about, um, you know, injuries and prevention and dealing with it. And um, yeah, and I guess once you go, go out on the other side, you are able to then be that helper friend 
to your other friends who might get injured. Um, and you can pass on information as how to help them stay injury free as well, because that's the most important thing. We had a whole episode about safety. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do a whole anatomy episode. That would be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we did ask the pole, P- pole PT if they could come and, and um, be interviewed. So hopefully they can come soon. Yeah, but you should check out their fun. book, the Pole PT book. <laughs> uh, it's a, yeah. an amazing book. Um, they, they have a new one coming out um, really, really soon. Um, it was really life-changing. I wish we had this book sooner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I did have one more thing to add for injury prevention that I completely forgot about. Train both sides. We cannot say this enough. Yes. Train both sides. Um, it doesn't matter how perfect you're training that one side, that best side. You could be using proper engagement, proper abs and everything. You need to train the other side or there will be an imbalance and you will eventually feel it. And it will either injure you or definitely hinder your progress. Yeah, yeah. In ways that you would never know, just because our bodies, um, like my physical therapist literally called me the compensation queen, <laughs> which means that my body just, it, it is smart in that it goes to like the easiest, fastest way possible to do the thing, but it wasn't necessarily the right way. So if you do it, maybe not the right way over and over again, you can cause an imbalance in your body, which is what happened to me. Yeah. Let this be a lesson. <laughs> um, and another thing with injuries is if you have those home poles please be careful be safe make sure they are mounted on a beam and all of them because I have it's not a common injury but I have cracked the rib just because I was spinning wildly upside down beautifully and then too much momentum and the pole just dismounted and I landed on it so a nut, that is a side note that just came to me. If you have a home pole, it is not a common pole injury, but please, please, please make sure it is N30 to prevent any injury. Yeah, yeah. And, and like we said in our um, safety episode too, like use a, a safety mat. Um, we now call it a safety mat and not a crash mat because we don't want to crash on it. Thank you, Scarlett Inferno, for, for giving us that suggestion for the safety mat. But yeah, that is definitely for injury prevention. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all I have to say about injuries. They suck. Like they're the worst, but they happen. They do. Um, yeah. Studios carry ice packs for sure in case there's like a far injury in the thing make sure you have incident forms but we talk about that safety that safety episode too but i mean i guess it's good things to kind of bring up and remind too for sure yeah and also to entice you to watch that episode because it was really like (laughs) it was long like you might have to watch it in sections but it had really good information just for like home studios and um you know students and teachers um and in the strip club yes yes yeah yeah. Mm, yeah. This was fun. Um, I have wonderful ideas for an anatomy episode. If P, if the PT um book people don't reach out, I hope they do. But if not, that anatomy would be cool. I think it would help us learn more about our bodies too. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I said, for for people who are visual learners, it's really helpful to see like where the things are in your body, and and how they work. So. Yeah. That would be a fun episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, awesome. So let me see. Anything that we should add in the comments? Oh, yes. Um, let me see. Pole News. Pole Circus just released their summer showcase date. It's in June, I think June 9th. I may be wrong. Go to the Pole Circus to find out. Remember, we interviewed Stylish Charming. That was a fun interview. You can check out that episode. She's the creator of the Pole Circus. But they did just post that, their summer showcase, and they're getting ready and accepting submissions for that. Um, What else? Oh, and they also have, um, they recently did a uh, show to raise money for Ukraine. And I think they still have the show available and they're still able to like watch it and donate. So check out for sure the Pole Circus. And, and give them a, a, a yeah. watch and donate. I'm glad you said that. I forgot yeah. it. I forgot that. Thank you for saying that. 
<laughs> um, what else? What else? Oh, um, if you want to do PSO Liberty, the deadline I was just told is May 9th. Um, that's 150. Um, and the competition is in July, and that'll be in Philadelphia. Yes. What else? What else? Polcon ATL is around the corner. A lot of people are doing that. They have a lot of different people. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you like, check that out. I know um, some people aren't fans of them, and some people are, but they are polls, so we are sharing that news. <laughs> um, and what else? God, I can't even think of anything else. But if we do, we'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, if you want to send in your poll news, that would be really helpful for, to, to us. We do look up some stuff, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as we're in, uh, we're in Massachusetts and the United States, but if you have poll news all over the world, um, please send it yeah. in because it's cool to just keep, keep track. And especially if it's online opportunities, we can all like benefit from it yeah. as well. I love it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then anything else? Of course, in the comments, you have access to all our shops and our free intermediate course, beginner course, ebook, um, and our paid um, poster and a couple of programs we have. Um, so definitely check out those in the links. And goodness, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much again for the support and for watching. And, and if you have yeah. any um, thing to share about your injuries or ways you, you prevent them, um, you know, contact us and we, we'd love to hear from you and maybe we'll do, you know, another, another episode about <laughs> terrible yeah. injuries. Um, yeah. Oh, and we're doing an episode on why you poll. So if you could, if you okay. want, send us, via Instagram, like a 30 second, one minute video, um, just sharing your story of why you poll. Um, if it's longer, you might have to send the inspection. But either way- <laughs> if, if it's, it's long, um, we might ask you for a full interview. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, and of course, as always, send us your poll pics and quotes so you can be added to our Monday motivation. Um, but yeah, at, like Mandy said, thank you for your constant support. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Um, can't wait to see y'all again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's it for us today. Yes. Um, I guess I'll end it off. I am Chris Rivers. <laughs> and I'm Mandy Mack. <laughs> and we're with Poe on the call. And we are, of course, signing <laughs> off. Signing off. Right here yeah. <laughs> Heels and pajamas. Shoes came out. Yes. I'm wearing like a nightgown with sweats and heels. <laughs> I love it. Normally it's just a nightgown, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, Bye, but... everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's